Now, West Ham have signed Wolves captain Max Kilman for a fee of around £40 million on a seven-year deal. But how does that move affect National League side Maidenhead? Well, let's find out. We can speak live to the club's chairman, Peter Griffin. Now, Peter, Maidenhead sold Max Kilman to Wolves for £40 thousand pounds in 2018 how proud are you of the progression that max has made since he left you oh, uh, tremendously proud we followed max's career when he was with us we knew he was a real talent real talent and but i'd be lying to say if i knew how good his talent was and and his his attitude and everything has helped him progress he went to wolves in the under 23s and within three or four months he's promoted to the first team squad and uh, he's just gone on from there and we are so proud of what he's done and delighted for him, obviously, in this move. And uh, we just follow his career and it's just been lovely to watch him you know, flourish and grow as a footballer and as a man. Excellent, excellent. It's been an incredible story and fascinating to see the rise. What are your memories of Max Kilman at Maidenhead? Was he a similar sort of player even back then? Um, he, he was, uh, he's always been a left-footed centre-back, but I think in his early days with us, he played at left-back more. Um, National League can be quite brutal on young centre-backs, so you've got to be careful how you blood players at that age. But he was always quite a um, very skillful player. Um, he always had a lot of technique and, that, and his attitude and that. So I think I, uh, the first time I saw him, he was, we had, had him the year before he played for us regularly. He was out on loan at Marlow and we played in a County Cup match against Marlow and, and he played for us in that one. And that was the first time I saw him play live. And, you, you know, there was a buzz about it then. But, uh, yeah, it just got better and better. And when he made his move to Wolves, we were delighted. Uh, but it's just gone so well for him. You know, really, really pleased for him. You had incredible foresight to put that sell-on clause in the contract. Is that common practice? Or did you sense there was something a little bit special with Max? No, um, we, we always have it in a contract. I mean, there's always a, 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 a negotiation about price and negotiation about extras and a sell-on clause is part of that. So, to be quite honest, we, we always put a sell-on clause in, um, in every circumstance. And, you know, in, sometimes it pays off. We've had a couple of little ones come off, um, but it's fair to say this is a bit bigger, this one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a big one. Your club will receive between six and eight million pounds from the deal because of that sell-on clause. What will that money mean for the club? Could it really mean that you could change the whole infrastructure? You could go from being a part-time side to a full-time team? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the figures you mentioned there are not quite accurate and we're not really allowed to go into it because it's all under confidentiality. But uh, it's not quite as big as that. But it is certainly uh, an amount which can profoundly change the course of the club. I mean, we're a part-time team competing in the National League. But we have a huge programme of, uh, we have a women's team and a, a whole development squad for girls. Uh, we have an academy. We have a, a community scheme which we run, which is um, fantastic. We reach out to many, many people in the community every week. So the money that comes in is not going to just affect what we do with the first team. It will affect what we do with the women's team. It will affect what we do in our community programme and in infrastructure at the ground. So there's 101 things we can do and we will sit down and look how we can use the money for the best, best way, really. You say it's not six to eight million, but I guess it's, it's certainly a huge figure that could change and transform that football club. Can you put the figure into perspective in terms of your average annual turnover and profit? Um, it, it's, it's significant, that's all. You know, it's, a, it's a really, really good cash injection into the club, which we're absolutely delighted with. We, we think that the way we've, we've done well out of this, uh, you know, all the clubs involved in the play, everyone's done well out of this, so we're delighted with that. So, Without going into any details about cash, uh, it, it's, it is significant and it will change the course of the club over the next couple of years, definitely. Chairman, you're, you're doing your very best to not answer the question, which is very apt at the moment with all the political changes that are going on. Let's talk a little bit about the money and where it will be invested yeah. first. Have you, have you got a hit list? Have, have you got a top three or four yeah. things that you'd, you'd really like to change and transform and, and get to immediately? Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, the car park at the club, uh, which leads into the clubhouse, is more potholes than it is tarmac. So we've already got quotes for that. You know, prior to this happening, there was work going on at the club every year. 
we've got to put some new uh, crush barriers on some of the terraces and there's some other things we need to do. So we had a list of work that we were already starting this summer. But what that means now is we can probably accelerate that and we can start perhaps looking a little bit, little bit broader, a little bit bigger what we do. But we're not going to uh, rush into it. We need to see how we can spend the money wisely and how we can get the most for our money and, and especially in things which are going to make the club more money into facilities which will yield more revenue going forward. So th there's a lot of things to look at, but it's, it's the really, really nice problem to have to be thrown this kind of thing. We're having to look at you know, what we spend and how we can get most for our money. But that's what we do in, in Maidenhead and non-league football generally. You have to do a lot with very little and we've got a little bit more, so perhaps we can do more with that, which is certainly the plan. So it's just really, really exciting for us what we might do with it and we'll look forward to the next couple of weeks to really plan that. And following that, there'll be a supporters meeting to, so we can share the plans with the supporters to update them what we're going to spend the money on and how hopefully we can change the course and direction of the club for years to come. It certainly sounds like a good plan to get the uh, supporters involved with the decision making on how to invest this money in the right ways. Max Kilman is one of a number of non-league success stories. What does that say about the journey he's had and the quality of players that perhaps are, are there in, in grassroots and non-league football? Absolutely. I don't think there's any secret. There's some clubs, I mean, Peterborough come to mind, they always buy non-league players and make a real business model of it. Um, there's a load of non-league players there. We've got five or six ex-players of ours playing in League One, League Two, scoring goals, playing regularly there. So we know it happens. We have a full-time academy which runs and we've currently got five of our first team squad assigned from the academy. Um, so we, we're actively doing that. It's part of our business model is to develop players and sell them. We have players in the Football League we've sold in the last couple of years which provide us good income. So. It's, it's a real, real, um, you know, very, very healthy pool of talent in non-league. You've got a lot of young lads who get released from pro clubs at 17, 18, 19, and they come to clubs like us and put their career on track and, and get them back into where they want to go. And it, it's a real good, uh, a feel-good thing for the players. We love it because it gives us some revenue and we get good players, but it's a real, real plus for everyone. And the players get back into the Football League where they want to be. Yeah, I love watching non-league football and, and get to it as much as I possibly can. We've, talk about, we've spoken about the success of, of Max Kilman, and I guess like you've touched upon there, there are so many other really young, talented players operating in non-league. In an era dominated by profit and sustainability considerations, do you see more clubs from the Football League and potentially the Premier League looking at players in non-league? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the Max story shows how rare it is for it to step up, but you'll have players in the England squad, you have players in the Championship and other Premier League players. They may not all do it in one step from non-league to Premier League, but it does happen. And I think it's, um, the clubs have got their, that got their scouting networks and that, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't just be looking overseas, which obviously, you know, this day and age, they all have very wide scouting networks. But, you know, the talent's there, but you've got to find it. And it's, it still is a huge amount, you know, Wolves have done a huge amount with Max to go from where he was as a non-league player to get him there. So whilst we started that journey with him, they've had to continue it. So the clubs have got to be aware of that and what they can do. But um, the talent's there, but it still is. It's a, it's a big jump up and um, some players can do it with the right backing. And, you know, it's, it's about the, the scouts getting that sort of opportunity to work with those players to do it, really. On the pitch, Maidenhead are about to embark upon their eighth successive season in the National League. What are the hopes for the campaign ahead then? Oh, well, avoid relegation is always our aim. It's our eighth year here. We're always pre-season favourites to get relegated, and this is the eighth year we haven't. Well, seventh year we haven't. Um, I did see the other day we were 100-1 to, to get promoted, and somehow the, the odds have been pulled this morning, so I don't think we're going to change much yet. Uh, we've got a squad we're very happy with this year, really delighted with the squad that Dev's put together with his coaching staff and scouting staff again. And we're very excited for the season, but we're under no illusion this has got to be uh, avoid, avoid relegation. It's always our first thing, but let's see what might happen in the, this year and the next few years now. Fantastic. Peter, the chairman, uh, thank you so much for Maidenhead. Great to speak to you. Great to get your insights and your thoughts. And uh, if anyone wants to go and watch Maidenhead, they might see a Premier League star of the future today. You never know.